Penelope, how did you find Carnival? Dave, thanks. Um, thanks again for uh, putting out the call for everyone to chime in and kind of give our story. So I found Carnivore by mistake last year, January 2023. Um, I was turning 50 last year. And since COVID, I had made a, quite a lot of changes Um to my diet, to a lot of things, right? Because as a 50 year old woman now, I am going through perimenopause. And one of the things um, I had been doing since COVID, I had lost weight. So most people <laughs> gained weight during COVID. And for me, I lost weight during COVID. And what I realized is that a lot of things I was doing, drinking and eating out was totally social right? Totally social. And so during COVID, I was not drinking a lot. I was not going out, of course. I think the whole world was on lockdown. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I lost quite a lot of weight um, just to kind of give a, a high level. I've never been overweight, always been sporty, um, ran track, played basketball. Um, even when I, even after I graduated college, I still ran like um, 5K races in the, in the U.S. And so, so a very sporty person. Um, I'm, I'm an American here in Germany. And when I moved to Germany over six years ago, I, I did not buy a car. I didn't bring a car. So I'm still rather mobile, right? Um, and so, but I was finding that I was, I was not um, fitting my clothing. And I was also trying to gain weight um, by eating pasta for the last few years. And that didn't work. <laughs> and I thought, oh God, I need to, you know, I, I knew that the pasta, you know, I know it turns into sugar and all these things. And I was like, yeah, 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 I'll get this weight on. And like I said, coming into my 50s last year, I kept thinking, you know, I'm watching all of these different videos. And I wasn't watching, so I don't get into the diet thing. So I, I know nothing about what a really, a, what a, um, what, how shall I say, a vegan or vegetarian really is, nor do I really care. I respect everyone wherever they are, right? I, I've heard of keto, but I've never cared to know to what extent keto is. And as long, again, as long as it's helping, right? Helping um, individuals. But I started thinking, okay, I've been several years since COVID trying to put this weight back on with the worst thing you could possibly do, eat pasta every day, all day. <laughs> and um, it didn't work. And so I did, I decided to, you know, I started watching, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit vain um, because I, how shall I say, I want to prove to myself that I can kind of freeze time a little bit. I don't have wrinkles. So I tell myself, okay, let's see how we can figure this out. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm my own little, um, um, what do you call it? Uh, I do my own little experiments on myself. Um, so I had been watching quite a lot of videos about women aging, reading books and a lot of different things, understanding that our bones, you know, we really need to be all about our bones and all of these different things. And so I decided to Google, I said, okay, I, I don't take any medication other than if I take um, I, uh, ibuprofen for pain, right? For my um, perimenopausal symptoms, things like that. But I, I'm, I've never been on long-term medication. So I thought, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm truly blessed in this sense that I'm, I'm turning 50 and I've not, you know, incurred all of these things that most people and that I've watched even on your show have had or getting through. And so I did earlier last year, I decided to Google how do you know, how do you cure diseases naturally? Right. And so I'm like, the things that popped up were Dr. Berg, Dr. Berg, there was this, these two men here in Europe. One was in France and I think he was in his thirties. And then one was in Italy and he was more around my age, right. In his fifties, between fifties and sixties. And one of the things that these two men had in common that Dr. Berg, and I think Dr. Berg was doing some type of, some type of study um, over here in France, um, that they ate meat to cure like cancer. And I thought, hmm, I'm all about prevention. So what about eating meat, right? To continue to stay healthy, not have to go to the doctor because I really am against the 
the whole medical industry. Um, I think that they let us down during COVID and I'm really, I, I'm not a bit bitter, but I take my stance by basically not, basically taking care of myself, right? Continuing to take care of myself. And so I did, I, I, I didn't go down the same rabbit holes that a lot of people did. You actually popped up um, and I think you were just either getting things started because you were doing these little bits on your own. And I thought, oh, this is interesting. He's having these, you know, he's really using meat and he's, he's just getting started. So I did, I watched, I watched you kind of grow from a toddler, right. From a baby to this grown man right now. Right. And so, um, I did, I watched Dr. Berg. I kept going back over these guys because I really wanted to hear, they weren't necessarily talking about carnivore. They were just saying, okay, I eat chicken and I eat vegetables or something like that. But the, the main, the, the, the main, um, aspect that I took out of this was meat. And so then, yeah, I did, I did kind of read about carnivore. I wasn't really big on a lot of the people that everyone sings about on your show, because again, I'm against doctors, right? So I'm not really interested. I'm not really interested in people selling me um, products or things like that. I, I'm, I'm very much a headstrong individual. So I listen, but I don't, I probably don't take everyone's advice because I kind of sift through and think, okay, we're all different and things will work differently for us. So Dave, at the end of January, I was reading about everything. I knew I was getting ready to go on a nice little trip um, for about a week and a half to Portugal. And I thought, okay, I think when I come back from my trip, I'm going to just kind of kick this off. And actually, I found myself in Portugal still thinking about carnivore. So I tested myself. I went to certain restaurants. But here's the kick with the restaurant thing um, when I was starting off. I, I had to go to rest expensive restaurants in order to be particular you you can't walk into a a burger joint or a place that's serving you french fries with every kind of sauce in the world just so that you could say i've had these fries in portugal and this is the fantastic sauce i had and tell them that you can't have certain things right and so i'm very respectful of that so i did um in certain respects i i went i found the local soup supermarket um and bought quite a few things and had them in my room um and then i also yeah i did i ate quite a lot of fish right of course i'm in portugal um so that was really nice but what i what i learned and and i've kind of carried this through throughout the year because now um since february the end of february last year 2023 i've been eating this way and and, and what it's been for me um is a revel a revelation right it's it's been more of a revelation um that i can enjoy my life without having a specific type of food to say, mm, I'm sitting out on the boat and I'm drinking my wine and I'm eating my food, you know, things like that. And so, because I, because when I was on my trip, I thought, oh my God, I'm the only thing I did. I mean, I did find a really cool coffee shop that sold the best um, banana bread. And guess what? The guy was from Australia. So it was like an Australian but he kept harping on the fact that this is out of Australia. And I'm like, okay, well, it's good. Okay, let's get over it. But um, so anyway, moving on through the year. Um, so I wouldn't say that I've, I've experienced so many miraculous things. I did turn my mother on to this because like I said, I, I'm an American in, in, in Germany and my mother still lives in the States and, you know, we speak at least once a month. And so I think it was, I had returned from my trip and she got on the call with me just complaining and, oh, I don't feel this. And I feel that my mom's like 78. Yeah, she's 78. She was 77 last year. So I did, I, I pushed her. I said, look, dude, if you're, you know, you're going to complain, um, I want you to try what I'm doing. You know, I gave her that same example of the two guys here in Europe um, that Dr. Berg, you know, kind of spotlighted twice, I mean, on his show. And um, she did, she jumped right in, um, in 30 days. I think my mom lost about 15 pounds. Her doctor was very curious that maybe something is going, I know, right? 
something was going on. And so she felt good. She was happy. This was all about diabetes. I'm sorry, I didn't give you the, the backdrop. So she, she's she been diabetic. Um, and most of my, my mother's problem is, and I didn't even know this because she didn't buy us sweets and things like that. But she she's like a glutton for sugar. She is totally addicted to carbs. She's totally addicted to sugar. Um, so she has. She's went through the year. And she's had her bouts of where she's. <laughs> she told me that she pulled up to a store. You're not. Uh, she bought like a box of the these little Debbie treats and sat in her truck and ate them. <laughs> and she's like, the next day I felt so bad, and I thought. All right, dude, you, you got to figure this out, you know, because to me, it's for her, right? She has to do it for her. And um, I think she's a little tired of doing it because we just talked a couple of weeks ago. She's a bit tired um, because I think she just she's addicted. And, and I told her, I said, so I said, you did the major part. You've seen how this can benefit your life. You know, you know what to do. I mean, we even changed. She she's off of meds. Um, they had they had her on some type of which I thought this was so terrible. The doctors put her on a kidney dialysis type of medication. I was like, dude, your kidneys aren't failing. This medication will cause them to fail, and it's a, it was affecting her pancreas. So all of you know, it's a it's a it's a what do you call it? A triple um, effect. It's an effect. Once you take this, then something else will happen. So all of these things, I think she's just a little more keen now. She's a little more keen. She, you know, she was a nurse. So I think there's a part of her that wants to believe in the doctors, truly believes in the medical system. And when I was trying to tell her these things, she started laughing and telling me, so you're telling us that we're going to eat meat and, you know, I'm just going to be fine. And I told her, I said, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm not curing anything. <laughs> I said, but I hear all of these people having such great results and I, and I believe it. I said, in my heart, I can believe it, um, what they're saying. So anyway, she fast forward. I, I think my mother's going to relapse probably <laughs> the rest of this year because my brother is visiting and I think he's not pushing her. So, but I told her it's up to you. You know, I no longer want to push, you know, push her. So fair enough. Um, but with me, I think like when I want to go back to the revelation part that uh, I kind of brought up for me, um, even though I go through perimenopause, quite a lot of symptoms, I didn't get on this for that um, because I, I am kind of a natural path anyway. So I don't, the only thing I've had to start taking in the last couple of years was the ibuprofen um, because the, the symptoms were becoming very, very um, difficult for me to manage. Um, but I'll tell you, um, for me, it has been one of those things that has been more mental. I, 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 I don't think that I've had, um, what do you call it, brain fog throughout my life, nothing like that. Um, I think when you're going through perimenopause um, and menopause for women, you do kind of get some areas where you forget what you've said or you walk into a room. I don't consider that such a terrible thing for me because it's it doesn't happen so often. But when it does, I just laugh it off and I, I just walk back and I come back and I go, oh, okay, yeah, I remember. But for the big reveal for me is that we are so much more than 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 a than somebody to than to eat food. We are so much more, you know. Um, even from that trip, and then now when I meet with friends, um, you know, I still I'm not a coffee coffee drinker, but I'm a social social light in the sense that I do um, entertain my goddaughters and friends that are here um, in Germany with coffee. We you know we go out for a cappuccino, and take walks and things like that. Um, as far as alcohol, I, like I said, in COVID, that just started dwindling. I mean, I, it was almost weeks and I hadn't had a glass of wine. Um, I, I will say this, since, since joining this, um, this movement, I, I consider it a movement, um, I, don't, I, don't, um, I don't really want you know, alcohol. I did over the holiday here in Germany. It's pretty big to to be out and about in the um, at the at the Weihnachts Mart, the Christmas markets, um, and things like that. To have to have um, what most people will call mule, mule wine. Um, 
um, and things like that. So I did, I did um, treat myself to, I can count on one hand, right? Um, less than five um, drinks that I had. So I don't necessarily restrict myself. I have been out to, I don't have troubles with going out to dinner because when I go out to dinner, most of my friends know what I do. So even if I order, and again, I don't like to stress the people out at the restaurant. So I do, I, I will, um, I'll order the most meat dish, right? Even if it comes with all of these, oh, all of these sauces that they rave about and everything like that. I will scrape as much as I can off the, off of the steak. I won't eat the vegetables and I eat and you know, if, if a friend, like one time, I think it was over Christmas, one of my friends had been away for so long. And I mean, they ordered like a champagne and, you know, we're all at the table and all I did was eat my meat. I did drink a little bit. I didn't even finish my, my glass. I didn't even get to, I think I got to half. And then I poured into one of my friends glass. I was like, you have the rest. And um, even when, and this is an Italian restaurant. So you can imagine all of the, the, we kept having food coming and coming. And then we had like the dessert and I just gave my dessert to my friends. No one asked any questions, you know? Um, I think because I'm headstrong, no one's like going to pressure me. <laughs> They're like, you know, I don't pressure people. So I don't want people pressuring me. Right. Um, so I try to respect people in that, that way. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's a little simple for me. I, I live alone. Um, yeah, everyone knows. I, I did have several friends that last year when I was kicking this off, it was a little difficult for them to understand. Um, they were a little younger than me. So uh, they didn't see what I was seeing in myself, thinking about me aging and, and just really trying to get ahead of it. So of course they, and, and I didn't expect them to, um, but it has, it's, it's been so mental for me, Dave. It's, and it's been a good mental where I, I look at people and, and I think you're um, the rabbi, the rabbi that you had on, I actually saw him. Um, Ferrigno was also another one of those people with you that I saw in the beginning. And I kind of held on to um, since, and um, the rabbi was also on Ferrigno. Um, and he said, similar, the same thing that I'm feeling. I mean, it's just one of those things where now you can look at people like I'm walking. I do quite a lot of walking on the bus and train and you can see people where you, you do, you want to tap them on the shoulder and say, have you tried meat? You'll move a little faster. You know, have you, have you tried eggs? Your muscles will automatically pump up without any, any, uh, any weight. So yeah that'll kind of lead me into the physical. So as I talked about me being a, um, a bit sporty, when I did lose the weight, and that was the big thing, I did lose quite a lot of muscle. And I was a little upset about that because that's part of my frame, right? I don't have, I didn't have a lot of fat in the fat I did. I think it was more of the alcohol and the the restaurant food, right, um, that I lost. So I wasn't mad about that, but I was mad about the muscle. Um, so that was, that kind of kicked it off. I do eat um, in the beginning. So, so in the beginning, the beginning was kind of weird for me because I didn't want to throw away food. So I was still eating some types of fruits. So I was eating bananas and um, blueberries. I was having nuts and what was that? um, yogurt. I, I, I just, I don't know, all of a sudden, I think after about several months in last year, totally didn't want to have any more yogurt. Don't know why, um, stopped eating the bananas. I, and for that, again, I didn't like the smell of the waste in my apartment. So for all of these vegan vegetarians that talk about that, I'm like this waste, it's horrible. I have less waste. So I don't, I don't eat the fruit like that. So I, I still eat fruit because I think when I emailed you, I told you I'm about 99%. So probably once a week, I have some sort of fruit, but here's the kick. I realized I'm only eating citrus. So I'm only eating up through, uh, I think it was the beginning of March. So when, when, when citrus is out of season, I'm not eating it. So I realized in the last three almost, yeah, three and a half weeks, I've not had any fruit. And I said, ah, other than, okay, let me go back. I do um, press lemons. I press lemons 
three times a week. So I drink the lemon juice with water. So I do some, some type of detox and I really, I don't put anything in it. So I press it, pour it in the glass, pour the water and I drink it straight. So I do, I do that. I, I don't um, restrict myself um, from that. Um, let's see. So yeah, I do. So I'll, I'll talk about my diet. So in the beginning, I didn't really know. Again, I don't really listen to people. I did, like I said, when I was listening to you and listening to Ferrigno, um, I did watch a few other people, which they kind of let me down and, and because I really am pulling for people. But I started out one time a day eating and I was like, this is not, I'm not beefing up, right? So I kept listening to people. Um, and then I started thinking, and I was only eating the, um, you have to excuse me, I'm thinking a little in German and English, so I have to remember hamburger, hamburger, the ground beef, ground beef, that would be Hochfleisch in German. So <laughs> just in case somebody wants to know. Um, so I was only eating that about 100, 500 grams, which is a little over a pound. Yeah, I don't know, a little over a pound if you want to put it in uh, American metrics um, a day. I was eating, I started off three eggs and that was it. And some pieces of fruit. And I was like, dude, this is not working. I really needed to work I, because I'm thinking the backwards. People are losing weight. I just need to. So I did. I kicked it up. I started eating four eggs a day. I started, um, I incorporated pork, which was interesting. I was like, wow, the last time I ate pork before all of this, it, it gave me, um, I think I, I, I felt like all the grease. I don't know. It just didn't go right with my stomach or something. And, but then I thought, okay, you're not eating the carbs. You're not eating, eating the sugar. So maybe it'll be, you know, a little something different. And true enough, I have, I would say maybe eight months now, I've been eating five pieces of bacon with four um, scrambled eggs um, for, and I don't eat breakfast. That's another thing. So I never have been a big breakfast eater. So, um, and I'll come back to the fasting in a minute, but so, but now I've kicked it up to five eggs, um, a day plus the four slices of bacon, um, here in Germany, you, I think you can get the best pork, <laughs> like pork country. Um, so I eat some form of, pork every week because that I did, I gained weight by, I would say five months in last year, I did reach a goal. So some of the clothes that weren't fitting are now fitting. So I'm very happy. And so now I eat like two, possibly three times a day because, Hey, I, I'm a growing girl. I'm 50, but I feel like I'm still a growing girl. Um, and, and I like it. Sometimes I do scale back, um, because I stay busy with, with work. Um, I don't eat as much and I've, I've always been like that. And I think that was the problem on the problem with um, when COVID hit, I realized something about myself, even though I may not have been eating the best foods, I wasn't eating enough. That was a problem for me. As a child, I was always kind of picky. Um, my mother did not restrict um, us from meat. So I've always had meat in my life, liver, chicken. My dad was a hunter, rabbit, squirrel. I mean, so, <clears throat> These types of things are not foreign for me. Um, you were talking about lard the other day, and <clears throat> I was thinking to myself, oh my God, I remember these packets of lard that my mother would throw in the pan, and then you see it's, it, it looked white, then it would just be clear, and they put the fish in it or, or something like that. And I thought, wow, so it really wasn't bad, right? This really was not a bad thing that my my parents were doing, but, you know, my mother as a nurse thought, you know, this pyramid, we have to switch. We need to make sure that the kids are growing strong and the right way. Um, I do eat steaks. I, I love steaks. Um, I, do, I, I, I drink quite a lot of um, broth, bone broth. Okay. Um, every week I boil probably on a Saturday or Sunday so that I have it during the week. So I am a bone broth girl in the morning. Um, that's kind of my, um, I don't know, my everyday coffee. Sometimes, sometimes I feel like it gives me a kick and sometimes it just, it just feels good. It warms my little belly. Um, I did start off with some chicken. I, I, I'm not opposed to chicken, but like most everyone that I've watched on your show, oh my God. Yeah. It just kind of went away. So I went from frying up legs of chicken to 
um, only boiling chicken to get the broth and the bo- you know the the broth from the bones, then to just uh all just repulsive. Like now, I don't even want the chicken in my house. Like so, I'm, I'm totally all about beef. Um, I have decided to incorporate more liver um, in my diet. I I'm not a the only thing about liver since I've you know, started eating this way is that I used to cook liver with onions. And I would say after about three months into um, eating this way, I totally removed like eating a lot of um, seasonings. Um, I'm I'm a glutton for cayenne pepper. So sorry, I just love cayenne pepper. <laughs> Um, but, um, I removed onions, peppers, anything that's a vegetable. I do not, it, it, it doesn't sit in my home. Um, I was never a big vegetable person anyway. So that was easy for me. I, I'm every time I watch and I see people on there that can't release vegetables. I'm like, really? Oh my God. Like that's, that's like the best part of this thing. Um, so yeah, so I, I can eat fat now. I think another person on your show just recently um, talked about that. And I was, I was the one cutting this stuff off. And now I'm like, I want it. Like I, it, it has like the most flavor. And so, so I, I'm, I'm discovering so many things just, and it's more mental for me. Like I said, it's a more of a revelation. So talking about the fasting, so for me, um, fasting is biblical. So it's not new. Um, In my family, um, our our religion, or I don't like to use that word, our spirituality as Christians, um, we have fasted. We have fasted to hear from God. We have fasted because of um, um, Easter coming, you know, the resurrection, um, I have fasted just to have clarity in my mind. And, and so it's, so this, so that's not new. So I really, you know, I'm totally don't like to hear this craze, um, about fasting because, and for some, maybe they're not spiritual. Right. And so again, this is all new for them, but fasting is nothing new for me. Um, it was by default that in my life, And this is probably um, one of the reasons I was probably good with my weight, because even though I I did eat and drink and, you know, I enjoyed being social with people and I ate anything I wanted, didn't restrict anything, was because sometimes I would wake up in the morning and I would go all day until I met up with a friend in the afternoon or something. And then that's when I would kick off eating. So my body naturally knows how to do this. I had... um, I was working for a company um, here in, 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 in Germany. And one of the managers had said to me, I had an eight, I think it was like two o'clock in the afternoon. I was just getting ready to eat um, before a call I was getting ready to have. And she's like, oh, that's horrible. You shouldn't, you should never go without eating breakfast. And I thought I've done this all my life. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I was like, this is normal for me um, to have such short windows. Like I will eat all night. I think if I had to think back to um, some of the worst things I did, uh, Dave, um, before coming into this, I could eat five cans of Pringles on my own and be, yeah, right? I think you talked about Pringles before. (laughs) I could eat five cans of sour cream and onion Pringles and, and I would be in heaven. And then I would get full, but yet maybe like an hour or two later, then I'm in the kitchen going, okay, I'm still hungry. What else is there? Try to grab some nuts or something. Okay. For a minute. I'm okay. Okay. I'm still hungry. So, um, yeah, this, this has been good. This has been really good for my mental, um, because I like, I like revelations. I like to see, especially as I'm getting older, I want to experience life in a whole different way. And this, to me, eating this way is allowing me to do that. It's allowing me to see people in a different light, not see people through social food and social drinks, you know what I mean? But really, really engage people in a way that I holistically, because I'm not thinking about food. When I walk outside the door, if I like, you know, I work from home most often, but when I have to travel to our location in another 
area here in Germany, you know, I may take boiled eggs with me, you know, on those days, I may go to a supermarket, I may get off the train, go to a supermarket and, and, and find the, um, uh, I always forget this word in English, the, the butcher, um, I may find the butcher and, and grab a couple of slices of, of, of um, sausage or something that I can kind of snack on. I do sometimes get a Granny Smith apple because like I said, I don't restrict myself from fruit, but I'm not eating it every day. It might be once a week or once, like now it's been three weeks. Um, so, um, and, and I do, I, I feel like I can be in the moment with people, right? Um, not that I haven't, but I, I feel like I'm in a, in a whole nother world. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm drifting. I'll just say that. I, I will say go this. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I can remember it. It's no worries. Oh, uh, so I was just going to say you, you told us how to say hamburger in German, <laughs> but you've left us hanging about butcher. Can you tell us oh, how do you say butcher? Metzgerei. It's Metzgerei. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. This is, yeah. Metzgerei. And I, uh, yeah. Yeah. To nice. <laughs> nice. So sorry to interrupt. No, no, it's okay. Um, yeah, I, I just um, so I will say so. I, I did mention in the beginning that I do suffer through quite a lot of perimenopausal um, symptoms, and no, eating this way has not changed um, my my body before. I took this on last year has started to change even more sometimes for the good. And then sometimes it feels like for the bad, but I didn't reach out to, I didn't decide to do this for that. So I have no, I'm not bitter about that. And I, I really, it's okay for me because I like my revelation so much better because you know, when you think about this, the mind, they used to, we used to have this thing in the U S it was a commercial and it would say the mind is a terrible thing to waste. Right. And so I feel like when I was eating any kind of way, I was wasting my brain power and didn't know it, did not know that I was wasting my brain power because I still was able to kind of rise above. And maybe it was when I wasn't eating because another part of this revelation for me, um, Dave, is that, I mean, not even that I'm just stronger mentally, um, I don't know. It's, it's another level. And, and I don't want to think about food, you know, and this is, this is the thing. I want to be more than food. I want to be more than a carnivore. I want to be more than I have to come in, you know, and this is another thing. It's been simple for me. It's been very simple and easy. I like that, um, that I know what I'm going to eat. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think yeah. I've kind of ran off. <laughs> I, I, I think, um, I, I don't want to. I don't want this to come across in an arrogant way or something. But yeah. it, it feels. It almost mentally. It almost feels like you're kind of. You're somewhat elevated from things, yeah. or you're able yeah. to kind of. I'm super girl. Yeah, just, <laughs> just. You the way you look at things changes, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I will say that. Um, it, it's. I, I don't know. I I don't like to think about food anymore. I don't. I don't. And don't get. I don't get me wrong. I I love food, and I I still can. I can talk with people about all of the foods that they like. Um, this past Christmas, I work um, globally, so I get an opportunity to, which I really think it's a wonderful opportunity. Quite like what you're doing, I get a chance to talk with people all over the world. And um, the thing about it, we were on a call one day, some of my teammates, and we're all in different countries. And some people were talking about their cultures and the foods that they eat. And I, I engaged, I swear, they don't know that I, I eat this way. Only, only my local team, the team in Germany, yeah, they know. And they think they're like, what, what? But, um, but, but others don't. And I was able to engage in all of this back and forth about pies and all, this, all of these things. And I, I told myself, I'm, I'm, I'm a step ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm a step ahead. Um, and I know that you'll probably get to this question, but Dave, I, I'm, I'm quite like one of, I think one of your other, um, 
um, guest, I don't really like to push people. I mean, my my family knows the only person I pushed was my mother, right? She's important. Um, so I pushed her. She 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 took it on, and I you know I'm very proud of her for that. I know she'll <laughs> I know she'll probably go backwards for a bit, but I am proud of her for that. Um, but most people they know. Um, I'll tell you this quick story. So last year when I began, I have a friend here in Germany because her and her husband travel so often, I may see her only twice a year. So we find we we had our first uh, meet this year. And so we met up to have a coffee and do a little bit of shopping, went to the market, super um, the outside market. And next thing I know, she says, so are you still doing that different type of eating? <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. And I mean, I just said it like that. And she's like, okay, so what is it again? Just the meat? That's it, right? I was like, yeah. And she's like, you look amazing. <laughs> and I thought, yep, I'm holding it in time. I'm holding it in time. I didn't, I haven't changed. I would just say um, I haven't changed. And so I did. I allowed her to come to me, kind of ask me questions because again, I don't like to push. So I did. I kept giving her, I went back over what I eat, how I eat, blah, blah, blah. One of the markets that we walk through it, they kind of sell everything from beer to fish to meat, just all of it. Right. So we're walking through, we got to the, um, the butcher, one of the, the ladies that was, had a farm and, um, she had her beef like packaged. Um, and so we're looking at it and everything. And I was going to buy a piece first, but I waited to watch my friend. And she did. She bought like this little piece because all she ever buys when we go together is fruits and vegetables. That's it. I never see any meat. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on with your family? But um, so, yeah, she did. She bought a little piece of meat and she looked at me and she's like, I might give this a try, but I haven't followed up with her. So I doubt it because her husband kind of rules. <laughs> so I doubt that they're going to switch um, to only meat. And she thinks it's too expensive. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's something you, you, it's hard to get that out of that mindset out of, exactly. your, out of your head until you've actually experienced it. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think the not pushing is really the good way to go because when you're yeah. too proactive about it, it actually becomes a bit tiring because yeah. you you think you're talking about it in such positive way. You think you're convincing someone and then they eventually they just kind of <laughs> shake their head and walk away. And it's like, yeah. I expended all that energy for nothing. Yeah, um, but, you know, I think it's, it's, it's just like being... Energy. Yeah, it's just like being um, uh, you know, someone on your show talked about this being like a religion. It is. It's it's almost like you just need to wear your cross on your shoulder, on your chest. And if they see it and they they like the, the, the gleam and the glow and the glitz and the glamour around that cross, then great. They might want to ask you questions. Um, but I do, I actually feel like um, I've always felt like Supergirl, but I even feel like super, super girl. You know what I mean? Like. Um, yeah, it, it's a different, because I don't know about you and, 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 you know, all the rest, a lot of us are over 50 that are really giving some good, um, um, examples or coming on your show and, and giving good stories. But it, at this moment in your life, you do, you just want to have some different experiences. And it doesn't mean that you've, you've got to go hang off a, a bungee cliff or something like that, you know, the, ex <laughs> the experience could be in your mind. And I love this thing because I think as long as we're strong in our mind, we can, we can tackle and handle anything and everything. Right. Yeah. So um, if someone did come to you and said, okay, Penelope, I, I want to do this, you know, yeah. you, you've got so much energy and, <laughs> um, you know, you're looking good. Um, I, I want a piece of this for myself. So how yeah. do I, how do I get started? What's the best way to get started so that I don't cheat? What would you yeah. recommend? Yeah. So I, I'd go back to some of the other people, what they've said, um, make sure it's not for food, you know, I, I would want people to go deeper mental because when when all else fails you've got to pull from somewhere and it, and it has to be from within and so 
you know, it has to, it ha just like with my mother, she's, she's my, my, um, my guinea pig. And, uh, you know, I don't think it's been strong enough for her. Right. And so this is why she's contemplating going backwards. Um, but it does, you have to come from within, you know, and I, and I would not give myself as an example because I'm an exception in so many, throughout all my life, I've been an exception. So I, I would not tell them to look at me at all. Um, because we all carry different, um, strengths, way that we approach things. But I would, I would say, think about what your ultimate goal is, right? And what's, what lies deep within, because at the end of the day, um, that has to carry you through because if you're addicted to carbs, yeah, someone else telling you is not going to, it's not going to help you. I'm going into that American sound. It's not going to help you. It's just not going to help you. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I would do. I, I would I would make it mental, Dave, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree about the if you're addicted to carbs. I mean, it's the same as being addicted to alcohol. If someone tells yeah. you to stop doing it, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so where does this go for you from here? You... Um, going to be carnivore for life and um also are you going to be a german carnivore for life <laughs> yeah listing yeah so i will i will be carnivore for the rest of my life i don't think even if even if something else came up even even if i ever decided to go to the doctor which i don't decide i won't do that unless i fall and break a leg um yeah, I will. I will be carnivore for life or 99, 98% um, because it's, it's, it, it feels good. It feels good in the inside, right? It feels good. And I love eating until I'm full. I mean, that thing feels so good. <laughs> so yeah, this is it for me. Um, yeah, I like it. I do. Nice. Well, um, I, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story with us, Penelope. It's really nice to uh, to hear from you. Thank you so yeah. much. Dave, thanks again. Um, thanks for being flexible with me not um, being visible, um, but also allowing me to share my story. You are really um, doing an absolute fabulous job with this movement. And all I can say is keep going. Yeah, keep going.